right, today we're going to be going over uh, how to handle the video portion of a turnover in Avid 2021 and above. I think the important thing to understand here, uh, even though there are ways to do it, let's just forget about same as source exports and let's just forget about Apple Compressor as a encoding app. In place of them, we now have OP1A MXF that replaces same as source QuickTime, and we have Adobe Media Encoder, which replaces Apple Compressor. So here's my reel that I want to turn over. I'm going to export an OP1A MXF at DNX SQ and you know whatever flavor of audio you need to do your turnover. So if you don't know already, DNX XQ is DNX 115. They're identical. It's just a more updated version. And DNX LB is DNX 36. So we're going to export the DNX XQ MXF, and you're going to get a file that's, for all intents and purposes, the same as a QuickTime, but it's just an MXF wrapper. And you can play these in VLC player if you need to be able to play it off of your desktop. The big advantage of an OP1AA MXF is that you don't have the settings for full and legal range, so no one can mess that up. So here's how we do turnovers now, or at least the way I feel is the best way to do them. In Photoshop, go ahead and create your burn-ins. Here's one for stage, music, and sound effects. Now what I like to do is create a 1920 by 1080 uh, Photoshop file, make the burns exactly the way I want them, and then make sure when you're done to turn off the background so it's a transparent layer like this. That'll come into play later. So I'm going to save these and quit Photoshop. In Adobe Media Encoder, we're going to set up some presets. So I've got the music department that needs a DNX 36 QuickTime. I've got the sound effects department that needs a DNX 36 QuickTime. I've got the composer who needs an H.264. And I've got uh, the stage that needs a DNX 115 QuickTime. So because the show's at 24 frames per second, if you search DNX, scroll down to the broadcast settings, and go find 1080p 24. Here's LB, which is DNX 36, and you can actually see it here. The megabit rating, and here's SQ 115. So I'm going to take my MXF that I created, and I'm going to throw a DNX LB on here. So this one's going to be the sound turnover. So I need it to be an MOS QuickTime, so I'm going to disable audio. And then under effects, I'm going to turn on image overlay and go choose the watermark that I created. So here's sound effects. And I usually put it at about a 20% opacity to take it down. I'm going to save this as sound effects. OK. So now in my user presets, I have this sound effects one. Music also gets a DNX 36 QuickTime, so I'm just going to duplicate it. But this one obviously needs a different burn in, so let's go choose MX. All right, for the stage, I need a DNX SQ. So let's go find SQ 1080p 24. Here it is. I'm going to give that one a stage quick time or stage burn in, also at 20%. And we're going to turn the audio off for that. Now, the last one, and I forgot to make a watermark for it going to be for the composer. Let's go modify that real quick. Composer is a little different. Composer is going to get an H.264. Um, I'm just going to use the YouTube preset they have and modify it a bit. So in this case, uh, generally for most H.264s, I do it to pick spec, which is, uh, let's see, we want to do it at 10 megabits, and we want constant bit rate and uh, AAC audio at about 192 stereo. And your mileage may vary. I just like to use pick spec because sometimes I use these 
uh, to upload to Pix, and I don't like having multiple settings. So we're going to go add the image overlay again. Composer, 20%, and then we'll call this Composer. All right, so let's look at what we've done here. We've got a Composer setting that's an H.264, 1920 by 1080, 10 megabits. We've got a music setting that's a DNX OP1A at 36 megabits, so DNX 36. Same thing for sound effects. Stage gets DNX 115. Now let's set up a watch folder. If we go over to this tab here, hit plus, I'm going to create one on the desktop, but you can do this anywhere on the Nexus. Uh, I'm going to call this Watch Folder. Okay, And then let's just assume that we're going to want to turn over to all of these people at the same time. So I'm going to drag those settings I just created here and delete this default one that they put for you. Now I'm going to take the OP1A MXF that I created and throw it in the Watch Folder. Now. I've already exported this to save you the trouble of watching it export, but if you were going to export it um, and you already have the watch folder made, you can export directly to the watch folder so you don't have to do this step of dragging it in. I'm going to drag it in, and it will take a little bit of time, but it will recognize it eventually and it will start making these uh, files. And there it goes. So it's making all four stage, sound, music, and composer. If you go into the watch folder and go to output, you can see them being made here. There's an option in the preferences in Media Encoder to add the uh, preset name at the end of these files. I don't do that because I like them all to be called the same thing and I just end up dividing them into folders and renaming them, but you can do whatever you want. Okay, let's take a look. So it takes the original file that you started with and it puts it in this source folder here. So if you ever need to do use it again, it's there. And here's the outputs. So first things first, there's some XMP files that Media Encoder creates that you don't need. Trash them. Here's the composer quick time. So I'm going to put that in my composer folder. Uh, just based on the size, you can tell these are the DNX 36 ones, and this is the DNX 115 for the stage. So I'm going to put that in the stage folder. And let's just see which one's which. So this one is music. So that's going to go in there. I'm going to rename it. And then. The last one's going to be sound effects. Throw that in there. All right, now these MXF files, some Pro Tools users are comfortable with them and others are not. So, what do you do if you get a department that insists on having a QuickTime? Well, I made a previous video a long time ago that shows a number of ways to rewrap these, but I've uh, since adopted this free utility called Shutter Encoder, which is in my opinion, one of the greatest uh, GUIs for FFmpeg that I've ever seen. Let's just face it, it is the greatest GUI for FFmpeg I've ever seen. Thank you to Paul Pacifico for creating this. It is absolutely uh, one of the best tools out there. Uh, and that it's available for free is even more incredible. Go donate to Paul. So I want to rewrap these three MXFs into QuickTimes. So I'm going to drag them into here. I'm going to select Rewrap. I'm going to choose dot mov and it will very quickly just rewrap these now if you want to get really fancy you can set up a watch folder for this too and then you can just hit export from your avid it'll transcode and then it will rewrap all for you and you can walk away and do something else without even thinking about it